I love you too. I love all of you. I love you, Bentinho. Thank you so much for, Hello. for your teachings and your work. Pleasure. Um, it's been such a change in my life. Um, and I have been following this uh, path of excitement, and I have really a blessed life, a unique life. I've been traveling for four-ish years now, and um, it's been really amazing, and I'm a space holder just teaching um, spiritual work and leading ceremonies as I go. And um, I just encounter this <laughs> pattern of always just having enough to get by. And um, as I learned with my own teacher that I need to embody that I love having just enough to get by in order to actually shift it. And yet, um, it doesn't actually shift. And I continuously find myself like year by year just reaching the very bottom and then raising myself up. And it's like, I feel like I know the law of attraction because I know when I'm at the bottom. I just have to like, okay, I'm just, I have no money and now I'm just going to be completely blissful, like whatever. And then it, 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 it works. And then like something <laughs> happens along the line that I just, it I lose it again. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Vroom. Vroom. It works. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I just don't understand or why I keep playing my pattern out. Why you what? Why you keep playing the pattern out? Cool. Could you sit here? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do you love yourself? Yes. Yes, very much. Do you believe you are worthy? Yes. What do you not deserve? Money, success, it's just subconscious, it's still there. Mm -hmm. Where does it come from? Where can just you trace it back to? Is it a moment in time? Is it something your daddy told you, mommy told you? Just mm -hmm. seeing the kind of the matrix and how the matrix depends on it, like the structures that just continue to push out bullshit, Illuminati, et cetera, sorts of things. And I remove myself from it, yet I see how that fuels it. And so it's like not wanting to be separate from it for some reason, creating a separation. Mm What are you rebelling against? What are you unwilling to accept? I don't know. Try. Myself? <laughs> well, ultimately, yes. Yeah. <laughs> How would you label that? How would you label Fucking microphone. <laughs> How would you label that in the world? What have you, if you look back on your life mm -hmm. and you sort of go back to the first moments where you started to, in a sense, make your own choices. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, what did you not want to be a part of? What did you reject? What did you repel? Um, what did you not accept about society or society? A lot of things, <laughs> like the kind of hyper-masculine dominator energy, the structure, I feel that I come from a pretty dense place and people just believing that things have to be a certain way, you have to, my whole family is conditioned to kind of think you have to work very hard to earn yourself, to earn your place in the world and if you don't do that then you're nothing essentially. If, if something just comes to you, 
um, the, then you inherently don't deserve it because you haven't broken your back to get it. Cool. And how have you been trying to explore the opposite? Um, how has your rebellion served you so far? Well, I've been having a lot of fun exploring a lot of healing modalities, working with shaman. Um, that's great. That's the escape side of things. Yeah. But if you look at also the good side of things, I don't yeah. mean to demean that, but I want to talk about when you look back towards the society that you, in a sense, abandoned. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or rebelled against. Mm -hmm. What's your status with that now? What, where does your relationship stand with that paradigm? Um, I see it as part of the whole web of creation, so I see it mm -hmm. as love, and I see the beauty in it. Um, I don't, I don't like it. I don't prefer it. Mm -hmm. um, I still somehow prefer to transcend it in some way, but I, I still see it all as love, even the darkness. And mm -hmm. Imagine yourself as a savvy business person for a second. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of judgment there. <laughs> Explain your relationship to that. Now, what are your definitions of that? Greedy, money hungry, power hungry no compassion. Um, it's kind of the qualities I associate with that image. Cool. And are you greedy for money? It's always like a fine line. Of, like I, There's a lot of guilt involved, I guess. Mm. Um, there's simultaneously like a feeling of like, oh, I need this to get by, and then, like, oh, I'm not... If I really set my standards higher, then, then it is greed. So it's sometimes I question where I'm at with that. <laughs> good. That's good. Are you seeing your belief systems that are causing you to have the experience you're having? Can you draw the logical reflection, conclusion? Yeah. Okay. So again, imagine yourself as a savvy business person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, <dude. laughs> okay. What do you feel? What's the first feeling when I said that? Kind of authoritative, authoritative. powerful. And what's your response to that energetically? Fear. Mm. Fear? Okay. Explain. Kind of like the same fear and why I'm shaking right now. It like kind of feels like that same kind of energy, like taking that power, it's bringing this like, oh, like this is a little uneasy feeling. <laughs> What's the uneasy feeling? Is it the power or is it some other definition you have of the power? It's a definition, yeah. What's the definition you have about having power? I can't handle it. You can't handle it. Awesome. Yeah. So you can handle $2 to pay for a little sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Can you handle $10 to yeah. pay for a full meal? Yeah. Can you handle $20 to pay for a full meal and a drink you really like? Yeah. Can you handle $50 to go out to an expensive dinner? Okay, that's <laughs> a no. <laughs> <laughs>
So how do you feel if you imagine spending $50 at a fancy restaurant? It just feels like, oh, wow, that's too much to allocate for something like food. Like so you have beliefs about that, right? Yeah. So you, you, you quantify reality mm -hmm. as much as a businessman would, no? Yeah. You're as greedy about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you have as many opinions about it mm -hmm. as the world you repel, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. The businessman doesn't care whether mm -hmm. he spends $50 or $100 on a dinner, for example, right? Yeah. So maybe they even have even less definitions about it. I'm not saying that every business person's way of hand handling things and acting in the world is, is an enlightened version of what they could be. Mm -hmm. Obviously not. But the ease, you can learn a lot from the ease with which they spend money. Yeah. With which the ease with which they receive money and let it flow. The ease basically with which they have a relationship to money because it is a relationship. Mm -hmm. It is a definition-based relationship. You have to check what ideas you have about it because those ideas will create the results. Mm -hmm. So what are your beliefs about it? Um. Uh, about having a lot of money. Because that's what you want, right? But you don't want it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that contradictory vibration will not get you to feel yourself in another personality that has a different kind of life. So you'll always just get by because mm -hmm. that's what you accept. That's what you tolerate. Yeah. Now, what if you would no longer tolerate $2 sandwiches mm -hmm. or even $10 meals? Mm -hmm. What if the only thing you accepted was 30 plus dollar meals? Mm -hmm. with a nice drink that you enjoy, whatever that is, mm -hmm. um, an appetizer, a main <laughs> dessert, mm -hmm. 30 35 $40 a night. Yeah. Uh, imagine that for a moment. It doesn't seem like it would be very sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> Just wonder, like, hmm, how many nights will that last? <laughs> so the... The businessman would not at all think, how much would that be per month? Well, maybe some business people would that are organized in that way and that really spend that way. But we're, let's, talk about, let's talk about the business guy that's like the Wolf of Wall Street kind of person, right? Yeah. That doesn't give a shit about anything, <laughs> about money, about the system. They, they get as much as they want and they spend as much as they want and they don't keep track, right? Yeah. Let's visualize that just to compare mm -hmm. those uh, two versions of you because there's a version of you parallel to this one that's living that life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 same, same soul, mm -hmm. two opposites, Yeah, just to have the full spectrum experience. Mm -hmm. So you can draw upon that parallel life yeah. to ease your way into balance. You have something to teach that world for sure. Mm -hmm. but they have something to teach you too. And so this balance needs to be established um, if you want to have the experience you want to have. Yeah. So again, imagine that. And without calculating, without adding it up, just how would it feel to spend $40, $50 a night on food? What's another first thing that comes up? A blockage. Uh, like it's a, l a blockage. It kind of seems in a way luxurious. Yeah. Mm. But the so? Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but it sounds good. Yeah. Good. So it's a good start to balance out these definitions. Um, you said it sounds a little bit luxurious. Yeah. So wh what's, what does that mean? What definition do you have about luxurious? Mm. In and of itself, I think that's great. Okay. But enjoying it is not? No, that's also good. Okay, N then what about it is repellent to you, or you have, you have you rejected? The first thing that came up when he said it was like, it's just, um, it's more than I need, so it's... Um, okay, yeah. so that's the belief, who has that idea, even if they don't fully believe in it anymore, who was sort of raised with that idea, that, you know, okay. That's a lot of people, I mean, that's part of this society, um, which is like based of course, there is a truth also about realizing every once in a while that 
you always have more than you need and you don't need to spend it if you don't actually are very passionate about spending it. You can be very extremely happy with not spending the money that you have or with not spending the money you don't have. You can be very, <laughs> you can be very happy. You can be very happy and content and satisfied and feel deeply connected to the one infinite abundance, whether you think you have a lot of money, whether you think you don't have a lot of money, whether you have a lot of money but you think you shouldn't be spending it or you don't want to, whatever. Um, so, first of all, how do you feel? Summary, right now. Um, what, what has shifted so far for you? I'm seeing it a lot more for what it is and seeing that it's just created through these definitions and I was aware of many of them before but I don't think I really it was like I just became aware of them but I didn't really shift them you didn't really um, see them as optional beliefs that might not be completely true yeah okay sweet good job um, so I was going to say something Yeah, so what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to say accomplish? Or what do you feel is your orientation in life? Um, I'm really passionate about the ET contact and okay. for people to discover there's unseen worlds to discover, not just ETs, but also spirits and to just um, see themselves as more spiritual beings and awaken these powers and I've been exploring a lot of healing modalities and I just like to hold space for people in groups and create the space for people to wake up to these things and um, channeling these sorts of things and I want to just take it to the next level. <laughs> awesome. And if you were not afraid of money, mm -hmm. if you had no negative definitions about money yeah. and abundance started flowing in, fl started mm -hmm. flowing in, started flowing in, you started generating more money, you started spending more money, you started enjoying more luxury. Yeah. Imagine that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, a year down the road after having had that experience. You know, mm -hmm. You're fresh into the world of money, but you've been there for about a year and you're starting to get the hang of it. You're starting to enjoy it. You're starting to feel good. It starts to come more. It starts to get out of you more. Uh, there's a flow going. Mm -hmm. There's a balance. You feel really good with it. You feel really good with it. Mm -hmm. And you're not stingy anymore. You're not greedy because you don't have it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So that, that narrow-mindedness of um, I don't need to spend a lot is the same as greed in many cases. Yeah. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, so it's actually a form of arrogance. Mm -hmm. It's a form of pinching of how things could flow through you. Mm -hmm. and it's fighting your own current, it's fighting your own stream, mm -hmm. and then externalizing that onto others that do have money or that do spend money carelessly or freely or enjoy it, and having some kind of judgment of that or trigger with that because really you would love to not have those negative definitions and feel out of alignment when it comes to the topic of money. Yeah. You would like it to be a non-issue. Mm -hmm. Now I agree a lot of these people that you initially mentioned I, money, even if they have tons of it, is an issue for mm -hmm. them, right? So what we, the balanced state, in my opinion, is for it to be a non-issue. Yeah. Ideally, we want to feel completely neutral when it comes to money. But that includes embracing the whole rich side of it, especially if you come from the poor side of it. Because you can't find that balanced ground by staying hippie-ish about it, you know? You've got to embrace the <laughs> idea of or having ideas about it, having concepts about it, having judgments of it. You can't sit on your high horse in the day. You know, that's basically what, um, what hippieism is in many ways. Not, not whatever, there's many branches. Okay, there's many branches within <laughs> hippieism. <laughs> so the poverty mentality, um, I'm so pure because I live in the dirt kind of hippie hippieism. <laughs> If you have, <laughs> you can literally imagine them as being on a high horse in the ditch, like in the dirt, <laughs> like in the poop. <laughs> but they're, in, they're on their high horse. They think they're the best and they're like everything else is bad. And they're, they're in the mud, but they're judging everything above them. It, that's the opposite of being on your high horse and being sort of like a Donald Trump kind of figure and 
judging everything below you. Not that he necessarily does, I don't know, whatever. But just saying, another example. Um, so either way, we have to get off our high horse. We have to find uh, equality with those ideas. We have to equalize. We have to take the charge, take the pain out of the ideas. Otherwise, we can't find the balance. So for a lot of people that are used to a poverty mentality, they inevitably will have to embrace and embody and experience and imagine what it's like to accept the flow of abundance. Mm -hmm. It's possible to find an equal ground without it, but in some cases, or in many cases, you have to ha at least imagine it sufficiently enough to equalize it, if not actually enjoy that experience for a period of time and see what it's like to really integrate that it's okay, to really integrate th that you're not turning into a bad person. And how much more could you do with a lot of money in terms of executing passion, passions and reaching a lot of people? A lot more. A lot more? Mm -hmm. So are you helping other people by sitting on your high horse in the poop? No. <laughs> 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 Not really. <laughs> so do you want to serve yourself, ultimately? Do you want to be selfish and self-serving? Or do you want to flow and be of benefit to yourself, including others? Yeah, that one. That feels better? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Can you imagine that somewhere along your journey, um, and I mean this in no way demeaningly, but you're still young, meaning like there's so much you're still going to experience in what you're passionate about that you're not aware of yet. Yeah. There's so much you're still going to experience in terms of how you want to share that with the world. Mm -hmm. If you keep yourself pinched off for many, many, many more years to come, you're going to be experiencing and, and integrating and crystallizing a reality that you get so used to mm -hmm. that you will not see that you have any other options in many ways. Not that this will ever truly happen to you, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. You will generate more conditioning in that negative path, thinking mm -hmm. it's the positive path. But yeah. it's, not, it's not equalized, it's not balanced. It doesn't allow you to be the fullest expression. The positive path is not having a lot of money or not having any money. The positive path is allowing the flow of your uniqueness to shine into this world. If that requires you to have no money, then that's the positive path for you. If it requires you to be the richest person on the planet, then that's what's authentically positive for you. So well, you can't take a concept and say that it's bad to have a lot of it or it's bad to have nothing of it. What's bad is to do something that is outside of your alignment. So you want to just live your passion and you want to clear out any definitions that block the flow, that lock the throat. You want to unlock the throat. You want to be free. You want to express. You want to receive, right? Yeah. So wha wha how do you feel right now? Good. You feel good? Yeah. <laughs> good. I feel like that's clarified some things and shown me my biases. And mm -hmm. um, So now imagine having a $55 dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wha what, <laughs> what do you feel? Uh, yeah, excitement. Do you feel excitement? <laughs> and also the kind of, so a little bit of fear. Yeah. yeah, and what is the fear at this point? Or is it the same fear, and if so, to what degree? But give word to the definition again. Yeah, it's, it's still the same kind of definition of that it, it's, um, it's just anticipating like future lack because of this kind of... Do you realize like that that comes with the personality you are choosing now? Yeah. What does your bracelet say? Let go. Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say now? It says, transform, integrate. Nice. So it says let go on the arm of the body that you chose to be part of this personality, you know? Yeah. Why don't you just let go of yourself? Mm -hmm. Just let go. Like, just be tired of this hippieism part of you that you don't need to do. Doesn't mean you can't still wear what you want to wear and express how you want to express and, and not be part of the corporate system. Mm -hmm. That you can still be an example, if that feels authentic to you, of a life that is perhaps more in tune with nature in a way, or that's yeah. more in tune with the waves of creation that don't come in those mm -hmm. particular ways. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. I'm not saying you should turn into a business person. Yeah. You should honor what feels true to you, but a lot of what feels true to you for us is shrouded and clouded in negative definitions and judgments, and we're on our high horse being spiritual. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. If we want to be spiritual, we need to be 
biasless, that is true spirituality in my opinion, is to become truly biasless, is to mm. not be triggerable. And so the trigger that comes is often like people that I'm working with are still in that hippie high horse as you call it and to kind of like I've tried to embody that authority of like actually like it's not like pay whatever you want um, it, there's a price and then like people are just like oh wow that person's like the devil and, and they're probably not actually helping me or the, well th that's the reality in the group of friends that you attract when you choose the state of being that yeah. comes with the personality that comes with the body that comes with the environment yeah. so what you're going to do is you're going to choose another body every time you wake up Mm -hmm. And you're going to feel really amazing about letting money flow. It doesn't mean you have to go to dinner and have a $50 dinner. It means that you feel good about it if it feels authentic. Yeah. And that you don't seek it out if you don't want it. It just mm -hmm. means you're in a balanced state. You have no objections against money coming your way. You feel the power of money. You feel all the good stuff you can do with money. Yeah. You feel how you can nurture your body. You can facilitate faster travel and accommodation and easier so that you don't have to worry about these physical things so that you can actually be more spiritual in a way, be less physically focused, yeah. be more in the visionary state because you're sleeping somewhere that you can rely on and you're traveling somewhere that is easeful where you don't have to be in a car with eight other people. That <laughs> <are you>? <laughs> <laughs> you read that one? Sorry? You saw that one? <laughs> <laughs> is that what happened? Did you see the dogs too? No, no. <laughs> no, but I'm not surprised I got it right. <laughs> Honestly, everyone is unique, but there's only so many um there's only so many characters on earth. Yeah. So at some point without judging, you can see, "Oh, hey, there's that character. That's awesome." <laughs> And it, you notice this, and you're still open to being wrong, but you just notice the same patterns, you notice the same thought forms. It's a, it's a demographic, you know? And that makes, it kind of that makes my life a little bit easier because I get used to all these different demographics and I, I know a lot of these, uh, the way these consciousnesses work now, so I can speak to different people in a way that makes more sense to them immediately without me having to figure everything out all over again. Um, and you're the total embodiment of one demographic, and that's <laughs> quite. <a> <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> and I say that with I say that with no value judgment yeah. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's just an observation. If anything, the discernment that comes to me is often when I see people that are embodied in your demographic. I see rebellion. I see um, fear of embracing uh, power and authority. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, the high horse in the dirt, mm -hmm. you know, the arrogance, and I see people pinching off their stream and I see them hurting themselves and unnecessarily postponing their journey um, and believing that they're actually on a spiritual journey because their rebellion includes uh, smoking incense, sitting in the park together, talking about spiritual dimensions and drawing all kinds of colors everywhere. So they... <laughs> <'Kay>. <laughs> Did I get that right? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, the point I'm making is that any kind of avoiding of a feeling or of a belief or of a reality, anything we rebel against, it, w we will always start, f we will always keep fighting that. And it's like an elastic bent not going anywhere because it's mm -hmm. stretched in both directions. So, it can snap and it can shoot in the direction you desire. But in this state of tug and war, you postpone the exploration and the, the potential that you have to bring to the world and to yourself. And you postpone it because you believe you're being spiritual. And so you think you're making a lot of progress, but a lot of times you're actually, in a sense, keeping yourself much smaller than you have to. Um, so it, it hurts me a little bit to be around your demographic. I mm -hmm. sometimes make jokes of it. I sometimes bring it to light, seemingly judgmentally, but I have no value of judgment of anything. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's, um, it's just caring for people pinching themselves up in that way. That's why I sometimes make fun of hippies, because um, 
It's, it's, it's a demographic mindset that needs to be opened up, that needs to be transcended. Ultimately, we're not part of any demographic. Mm. That is true spirituality, is to not have a demographic. Doesn't, yes. mean, doesn't mean you can still express yourself by coloring. <laughs> no, that can be totally authentic. And a lot more people actually should try it because it's very meditative. <laughs> it's awesome. It's a beautiful experience. But if that is what you choose to feel good about and entitled with because that's what you have to show for yourself, a bunch of colors on a piece of paper because um, you resist something else that you could also become, then you're keeping yourself small but you're developing ego in a very small sort of pattern of life. Does that make sense? Yeah. This go and this goes for every demographic, okay? You, you, you form this small little world and everything else is rejected, is, is fought against, and you can't really grow. Growing is expanding the circle. When you expand the circle, yes, it feels slightly uncomfortable at first. It's because you expand your frequency to include vibrations that were in your subconscious that you couldn't see before. Now they're brought to the light. That's the comfort zone. That's the stretching zone. So yes, it is good to follow your joy, especially when it leads you into the stretching zone a little bit, sometimes even touching upon the panic zone a tiny bit. But you want to be in the stretching zone frequently and make that your comfort zone. You want the attitude of embracing the stretching zone to become your comfort zone so that you can always expand your circle and that at some point it just it becomes so expanded that it's impossible to locate it or to pinpoint it back to an individual. You just at some point it just goes so expanded that it starts to break down and you can't have a judgment of anything anymore other than in context because it's relevant and it's of service. But you can't you don't you, you're not in your, in your bed by yourself thinking, oh, fucking hippies, they really annoy me. <laughs> it, like there is no, or it, like you don't have judgment of anyone. You're just really in your own alignment. You're in your own acceptance and you're in your own bliss and you love everyone. It's only in context or in teaching moments that you flare up in a discerning way to where it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So, how do you feel? Great. Good, yeah. good. <laughs> how, How could you reimagine another personality that still feels true to your soul, but that sort of gets rid of or extracts the, the benefit out of, but leaves the shell behind of the old self, which has biases and which has a small circle of friends and which has a small car for many people, which has a small demographic. Mm -hmm. How does it feel when you think about actually expanding your circle to include other people? many more people, many more yeah. demographics, and developing the skills and the personality that is able to actually meet people where they're at and who they are and not feel like you are a certain type that they yeah. are having to respond to. You become typeless in a way, yeah. or at least more typeless. Mm -hmm. Still as authentic, still doing what you love to do, mm -hmm. but you're expanding your circle. You're bringing it, connecting it to that many more people and demographics. Yeah. How does that, can you imagine that? And how does that feel? Yeah, I, can Im I already feel that, despite my outer appearance, that I can really connect with anyone at Beautiful. just the core level of their essence. Awesome. So that's, that feels easy to me, yeah. Okay, nice. So, and what would that look like if you imagined that life for yourself? Just more expansive, more inclusive, just show bringing other people to a point where they can see past their own barriers and include all kinds of people in their life as well and that's amazing. reaching a lot of people. <laughs> that's amazing. What would it do to your point of view that makes you presently feel that you are who you are as a person within a certain demographic? Can you feel that first of all? What? Can you feel that even though you see in an expanded way and you're spiritually very awake and mm -hmm. you can connect to people's souls, can you, can you sense how there is a subtle construct mm -hmm. or assumption of this is who I am? Can you notice that? Yeah. Awesome. What would happen to that 20 years from now if you were to embrace the corporate world, the government, uh, people from all walks of life and still be authentic to who you are but embrace everything and not have any bias to any concept, being able to utilize whatever makes sense in your theme and journey? Mm -hmm. 20 years from now, what would your sense of self be like? Limitless. Awesome. <laughs> Endless. <laughs> awesome. That is spirituality. Yeah. Very good. So if you, do you feel empowered right now? Do you feel the bubble has opened and popped to become anything 
that is required of you in order to act on your joy with an integrity and in service of others, inclusive of yourself? Do you feel the bubble or the gates at least have opened to where you can walk out and explore anything and not be afraid of it? Can you see everything literally as life? <laughs> Maybe not all of that, but th I feel the bubble is popping and it can be That's open good. to all of life. <laughs> That's good. What, what not yet? What can't you feel yet? And where do you feel the contraction if you do? Just, um, I think it's a certain level of mistrust is still there in, in, in if, this is a, if things are actually going to work out for me or okay. how it's right. going to work out. That's, that's fairly normal. So your, your yeah. world expands. Now yeah. there's this whole new horizon for you to explore. All these new elements and, and forms of abundance that you're allowing in because you don't keep them out anymore with your definitions. Yeah. You don't wonder why they don't come to you when you believe negatively about them. You're actually yeah. open to transcending those beliefs, to transforming them and allowing all forms to come in. But given the past personality and its memory, you bring s a certain amount of skepticism with you because you haven't seen any proof yet of that working out for you in a balanced way, correct? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 Let go. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. Let go. It's safe to let go. Mm -hmm. When you let go of what you've always thought you were, it can be a little bit scary to explore what's new, but really only to the remnants of that personality that you bring with you. So if you let go even that, there's no mistrust because there's no thinking concerning future projections. Mm -hmm. There's just the vastness, the unstructured nature of infinite potential. And you realize that all that you're engaged with at that moment is more of yourself that you didn't let in before. And you're now starting to give structure to that. You're now starting to take that infinite potential and make it manifest every single day in new ways and ever increasing your horizons and what you're capable of utilizing and channeling through you and giving to the world. Correct? Yes. <laughs> so you can let go. Yes. You're safe. Many people have done this and are doing this and you have a community of support and you have my support. So, how do you feel? I feel really blessed and so grateful for just this moment with you and mm -hmm. all of this guidance. I, mm -hmm. It's still kind of like ooh, shaky being up here, but I feel like it's really going to pan out in really beautiful ways and I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And deodorant is okay as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you actually have quite a nice musk. <laughs> it's very earthy, very natural. <laughs> <laughs>